Pakistan is today releasing the captured Indian pilot. Does this mean this crisis is now over? Well, we never wanted the crisis to take place. If India had carefully listened to what Pakistan was saying, this would have never happened. We've, we said, share evidence with us. We said, we're willing to cooperate. We said, let's sit and talk. That's the only sensible way forward. Two neighbors, two atomic powers, can they afford going to war? It's suicidal. So have you received any message from the Indian Prime Minister? Has the Prime Minister Imran Khan received any message yet? Well, we've, we've uh, made all the right overtures, but uh, he seems under a lot of domestic pressure. He seems uh, in a very tight position. So no response so far to those issues? Not yet. And the international community seems very concerned that this could have escalated into a, a full-blown war, possibly even involving nuclear weapons. How realistic or how serious a pos possibility was that, do you think? Well, it's a very serious uh, uh, situation we are in. We still are. It's, it isn't over, you know. Uh, the Indian Air Force is fully mobilized. The Pakistan Air Force is fully mobilized. We are on high alert. Uh, no flights are coming in or going out, you know. Uh, so it's a very serious situation. And I hope the Indians realize that. Um, Pakistan wants peace. We want stability. Uh, we want to look forward. Here in Pakistan, there's a new government with a new mindset with a new approach and we want to resolve issues. We have issues, obviously we have issues, but how do we resolve them? By firing missiles at each other? No, by talking to each other, by sharing evidence and finding a way forward. This crisis began with an attack on Indian territory by a Pakistani-based militant group, Jaish Muhammad. Now it's why- We are not sure of that. Well, you're not sure that Jaish Muhammad is based in Pakistan? No, or no, that no, Jaish no, Muhammad no, claimed no, responsibility no. for it? They have not. They have claimed responsibility They for have it. not. There's, there's confusion on that. Where's the confusion? The, the confusion is that the leadership when contacted, they said no. Which, the leadership's been contacted by who, sorry? By, by you know, uh, by people over here. They say, we, um, we, you know, they deny, they deny that. That's the confusion. The so point who's, is, who's contacted the, the leadership in, of, of Jaish Muhammad in Pakistan? Yeah. People, the people who are known to them, the people who are known to them, and uh, they've said, and they've said that we weren't responsible. I, they, they uh, claim no responsibility. But they issued a, a press release on their official, or their official there channels. Is, we all received it. What I'm it. saying is, what I'm saying is, there's confusion. There are conflicting reports on it. The kind of consensus seems to be because this claim of responsibility came through the official channels that Jaish -e Muhammad was responsible. And the perception is that Pakistan has never really cracked down on militant groups that target India. Why should anyone believe that Pakistan will do that now? We have prescribed JUD. Uh, the so-called nerve center of Jaish -e Muhammad in Bahawalpur has been taken over by the Punjab government. The information minister said that that wasn't linked to Jaish -e Muhammad though. There's a mother saw that the world and Indians have been talking about as a, as a training camp. Now, the media was taken there. And what did they see? It's in front of you. The target of these Indian airstrikes in Pakistani territory, India says, was another Jaish -e Muhammad training camp. Now, it seems quite clear that no, nothing like that was hit, yes, but yes. we do know that there is, we do know that Jaish -e Muhammad run a madrasa there because they've claimed that in their own magazine. That India, shows that it's India, operating there openly, listen, isn't it? Listen, India, what did they claim? They claimed that they had hit three terrorist camps. Where are they? Right? They claimed that they killed 350 terrorists. Where are the bodies? Right? They claimed that their airplanes, military aircrafts, were uh, violating Pakistan airspace for 25 minutes. That's not correct.
No one now, seems to believe the no, Indian claims. Not, right. not right. even people in India. But there is this uh, article within Jaish e Muhammad's own magazine that talks about uh, this madrasa close to where Indian we, we, planes we, bombed. We, so we, doesn't we, that show that, that listen, these, this group is allowed to operate despite officially being banned? I can, I can, I can speak for this government. It is a new government with a new mindset, with a new approach. And our policy is very clear. We will not allow Pakistani soil to be used by any group, any organization for terrorist activity against anyone, including India. That's our policy. One. Were mistakes made in the past, that means? What I'm saying is, we, they could be, uh, I don't want to go into the past. If we go into the past, then they could be fingers pointing on both sides. Now, at this stage, we want to de-escalate. Or do we want to get into a, a sort of uh, a game of sort of mudslinging? I don't want that. I want the escalation. I want diffusion. I feel tensions are too high. The tempers have to be brought down. The Indian media, unfortunately, not entire media, but a section of that media is behaving very irresponsibly. They are whipping up war frenzy and they're not helping the region uh, and they're playing a very dangerous game. And I want to come on to the role of the Indian election in this but before that I, I do want to press you on the founder of Jaish e Muhammad, Masood Azhar. He is here in Pakistan. Can you tell us is he under any kind of active investigation? Is he under house arrest or is there any restriction we, on his activities? We are willing to listen to uh, any reasonable proposal. Now, we have courts in this country, and courts are independent. When you take action against an individual, no matter who he is, you will have to prove your point in the court of law. What we are saying to the Indians, if you have something, please share it with us. And if you do, then we can articulate a case in court and we can justify action against that individual or that organization uh, to the people of Pakistan. And they've given you this dossier. Does there seem to be that level of intelligence in that dossier to allow that, do you think? Well, the dossier uh, was received yesterday. We are studying the dossier. And frankly, I'm saying through your program, that if India wants to initiate a dialogue based on this dossier, we are willing to engage with them. The Russian foreign minister has uh, offered mediation. He has said we are willing to provide a platform uh, for talks between India and Pakistan. I'm saying Pakistan is ready for that. The Indians can take their own decision. The Secretary General of the UN is saying he is willing to offer his good offices for de-escalation. I'm saying we welcome that. Come to the region, play your role. Uh, President Trump has made a very positive statement. I thank him for that. Uh, many, uh, you know, the, the British Foreign Secretary, China uh, is playing a role. The European Union uh, has uh, come out with a statement. Pakistan wants de-escalation. Pakistan wants peace in the region. We want to go back to the Western Front where the negotiations are at a very delicate stage where we could be, we may be very close to peace. After 17 years, uh, uh, warring factions are sitting on the negotiating table. This is a historic uh, opportunity, a historic moment. This diversion it's a distraction for Pakistan. We don't want to lose focus. Now, there are elections coming up in India. If Mr. Modi is re-elected as Prime Minister, do you think it's possible for uh, the Pakistan-India relationship to improve or not? See, he has boxed himself. He has taken such an extreme position. You know, the pendulum has gone so far. Coming back would be 
challenging for him. Uh, but it's for the people of India to decide. I can't speak for them. But d is he someone that the Pakistani government here is happy to deal with? We will deal with anyone who's the elected representative of the people of India. And one final question on Masood Azhar. The United States, Britain and other countries want to see him listed in the United Nations as a designated terrorist. Are they wrong? We are against terrorism. We are against terrorism, whether committed by an individual or an organization or state. You know, look at the conditions in Indian occupied Kashmir. Does the world, uh, why does the world overlook the human atrocities, the torture, the killing, the maiming, the use of pellet guns, double standards? will not sell. But you have no problem with Masood Azhar being designated as well, as well as highlighting the very valid human rights abuses in Indian we, administered Kashmir. We are open if we have solid evidence, if we have proof, we are open to move in the right direction. We as a power, we as a, as a state have suffered on account of terrorism. We've uh, uh, lost, uh, we've had 70,000 casualties we know what terrorism is. We pay the price, physical, economic. We are international partners against terrorism and we are willing to reverse extremism.